Hello, and welcome to Flap in Focus. For our regular viewers who are used to turning into Flap TV and seeing five panelists discussing three issues in 30 minutes, this is going to be a little bit different. This is a special presentation. There is going to be times where an issue on the local level is going to need more of a deep dive to talk about having an in-depth conversation about what's happening. And I think we can probably certainly agree that the Leominster school budget this year is one of those times where we really need to dig a little bit deeper. So for the next half hour, I'm going to be talking with Leominster Mayor Dean Mazzarella. There's been a lot of heat generated on the school budget issue. Over the next half hour, hopefully instead of heat, we can shed some light on the process, how we got to where we are and where we're going. Mayor Mazzarella, good thank you. How are you? Good, good, good. Good to see you. Good to see you. you look very sharp today. Thank you. And you, as always. I'm not sure I match, but I went with the whole black and white thing today, so couldn't miss. It's good. Mm. It's all good. And you're draped in blue. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> so I think one of the one of the parts of confusion that I see is the budget process itself. Obviously this is a city, not a town, so there's not town meetings and local residents living in a, right. in a city have the luxury of letting their elected officials handle all the right. minutia of the, the budget process. Right. So we've seen a lot of information on social media in the coffee shops, some of it accurate, some of it not mm -hmm. accurate. Yep. So part of the perception is that the school department handed you a budget, you cut that budget, submitted it to the city council, but not necessarily any other department. So the way the, uh, the budget process works is all departments submit to you their requests, what they feel that they need. Big word. Correct. Their requests. requests. Correct. That means, and, and, and if you generalize it, it's like, listen, this is, um, you know, here's a, a budget that has a whole bunch of things in them. Some mm -hmm. of the things are from last year. Here's some changes. And, and here's some other things we'd like to get done. For instance, the fire department or the police department or the rec department. We need to hire some people. We'd like to add a person to the drug unit. We'd like to add somebody to the traffic department or somebody else to, in, in, in training. You know, big training needs at fire departments. Training everywhere is paramount mm -hmm. today. It, we'd like to add somebody. So that's in that request box. Right. So you have a certain pie, right? Yes. You, you, have, you have to fill that pie come plate. In and they're well over, way right. over what that right. pie holds. But uh, there is no fire committee or police committee or DPW no. committee. So the school committee is much more public in its budget presentation and their requests. Correct. So there may be the perception out there that you're only cutting the school department no, requests. True. But if you look at the budget, you'll see. Right. A, a, you'll see. You, you've been through this. I have. You see a column and show this is this is what, what the budget was for last year. This is what the requests are. This is. You know, and then this is how much you have, and this is how much we can afford to put towards those. Things. So basically, it's a standard operating procedure that usually the budget that you submit to city to the city council for all departments is pretty much less than what they requested. Always. I mean, it's it, you look over the years, everybody puts in for things. I mean, if I give you the recreation department, there are always things in yeah. there that, and and but I have to say, most of the departments have gotten more in line with being realistic. When I say a realistic budget, is mm -hmm. knowing. This is the pie. What's the likelihood? Put those things on there because they're important, right? I mean, they're mm -hmm. you know sort of things that maybe we can't fund through that, maybe maybe through a grant. So it's a good communication tool. But right. never does anybody ever get everything they've requested. Right. And I think the big thing here is the school department threw the sort of five million over the wall and said, "Here it is." And basically, if you don't fund it, you're a villain. It's considered a cut. A cut. You don't like kids. You're, you're anti-education. I'm like, I only I have a pie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. pie. In fact, over the years, we've taken money to cut other departments to give to the school department. Okay. You know, this year alone, we cut two hundred thousand right, right from DPW. Two hundred thousand yeah. dollars were cut to give to the school department. There's a saying that people are afraid of the dark because they do not know what lurks in the darkness. Mm. So light is a great uh, light is a, light is a great cure for fear, right? So you know, I don't I, have a problem with people disagreeing. I, I just like right. the people to have all the information, not pieces of it. Well, speaking of people having information, one of the things that I notice is that the budget that was passed by the school committee, and the schools take up, what, how, what percentage of our of the city it, budget? It, about 50%? It's 65%. 65%. Um, so the budget on, they... On, on, on schools, and, and then that doesn't count other things. Right. You know, other. So the budget that was passed by the school committee, mm -hmm. and we looked it up, was two pages yes. with a lot of white space, right. no line items. The budget that you submitted to the city council, I looked it up online, was 46 pages. Mm -hmm. Very small lettering, by the way. Very yes. difficult for me to read. Yeah. Why 
Why is the school department not submitting a line item budget to you so we can have all that information on where the money's going? Well, budgets are a good communication tool, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they tell a lot of things, because especially if they're going to be a request. Mm -hmm. They should tell the story. If you look at my letter, I, I submitted a letter at the beginning of my budget that summarizes, here's what's going on. Here are the changes in the budget. Mm -hmm. I can sit here right now and give you next year's budget. Right. But there are some changes, right? And it's on those two pages that I submit. Clearly, one of the things that we have to do is, and that's not going to probably get fixed now, is the budget the school department submits has to be a better form of communication. Shrewsbury, for instance, does a great job with graphs and lines. And when you get done, it takes you from the very beginning. When you get done, you, you, you know, I consider myself an average person, an average mm -hmm. learner. You can understand it at the end. Yeah. This was not a good mechanism, to, especially now. This budget presentation should have been the best of all. Especially mm -hmm. when you're coming in five million. When you come in and your net school spending, you, you, you've given them one point two million dollars in the budget, and they're still five million dollars shot. Yeah. You clearly should have a very, very, now, very good. We should, and and, and and I suppose the and we'll the, fix that. I, I, I mean, suppose, that, yeah, that but I, I suppose the confusion is is that you've always submitted on the city side a very detailed budget proposal, the mayor's budget packet. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that on the school side. But in fairness, and this is something what what do the critics say is that. You know, you're chairman of the school committee. You've mm -hmm. been on the school committee for 24 years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Why, why hasn't this? Why haven't you demanded more accountability and more transparency well, in the school I had, department budget? I had a picture here, and it showed all the different budgets we've gotten over the years, all big binders. This mm -hmm. year, we got this little thing. Um, I'm one person, but if you yeah. look, if anybody that watches the school committee meetings, one of the things that, one of the reasons, back when they changed the charter, if you look at the charter change, the reason mm -hmm. they wanted, people have said. You don't belong in the school committee. You don't belong in this process. There's a conflict of interest. And I said, no, this is exactly what people wanted. They wanted the mayor on the, uh, on the committee because they wanted them to give the full picture, not just a piece right. of it, the full picture. So if you watch some of the things that I do, I act more like an advisor, like, mm -hmm. okay, we gave the teachers $2 million raise. Uh, increase in taxes is only, one. if you raise taxes to 2 and a half, it only brings you in 1.7. You're already in trouble, mm -hmm. right? So that's my job is to say, look, LCE, how can you open another school? Where's this money coming from? That's my job. Where's it better? You can't use this as a communication So you look tool. at your role as chairman of the school committee as more of a liaison to the school committee to have that communication? Well, I chair the meetings, so my yeah. job is to run them. My right. function on, part of my function on the school committee is to do exactly that, is to act as a, an advisor, right? I mean, I have some experience mm -hmm. in, in, in fiscal management or whatever, is to try to share some of that with the school committee. That, and, and let me just tell you, there are a couple of other members on the school committee that are very astute, very good at their job, understand finance. They're in the world of finance. They also have tried to advise the school department and advise mm -hmm. the school committee. But we're three members of, you know, nine people. And I'm not saying anybody's bad or good or whatever. I mean, there's a learning curve, but certainly, um, you know, certainly, I, I, you know, we try to, to you know, change the yeah. process. But what I think people ought to think a, a lot of times, and, it, and why wouldn't they? The mayor is the mayor of the city, and he runs the whole city. There are two budgets in the city, fiscal autonomy, right? The city gets a budget, and you have to give the school department a budget. Mm -hmm. Once that budget is given, the city council and the, and, and, and the mayor pass, you know, pass the budget process. The school committee has 100% fiscal autonomy. They have their own CEO who's the superintendent. I have no say over who gets hired, fired, transferred, where any of that money goes. I have no say over that. The only say the school committee might have during the course of the year is transfers amongst mm -hmm. line items. That's it. So with Fitchburg and Lemonster being about equal in size, mm -hmm. Fitchburg increased their school budget by $1.9 million, and that's when we talk about the direct spending, which is what, it, right. w which is w what is at issue here. Right. Lemonster increases it by $2.5 million. Now, both Lemonster and Fitchburg have their health care cost increase, yep. their salary increases, they're going to eat most of that. But if Fitchburg and Gardner and other communities uh, that are similar to us are able to increase the budget by a com comparable percentage mm -hmm. of what your proposal was and are able to maintain level services without these drastic cuts, why are we hearing about uh, these massive cuts being proposed in Lemonster? So what is, what is Lemonster not doing that these other, that these other municipalities are? It's, it's the perfect storm right now. And, that, and, and from, now, we're going to have an extensive audit. That's their job. The auditor's job. Mm -hmm. with the, my opinion is a couple of things, and this is what I, I cautioned against as we were doing it. Two million dollar raise to the, the to the teachers. Now, I'm not saying they don't deserve it or anything, but two million dollars when a two and a half increase is 1.7. Mm -hmm. 
right alone, there you got a problem. Increased cost in healthcare was seven hundred thousand um, dollars. They ran a seven hundred thousand dollars. They're running a deficit, or were running a deficit of one point seven million dollars from last year, and they have a reduction of ninety nine students. Pittsburgh has an increase in students. Law Mister has a decrease, which means the state now, because they they give you per student, they fund mm -hmm. it. There's a reduction. So add up all this, and a reduction in students, which means a reduction in assistance from the state. And basically, you have the right. perfect storm. Lemons is getting, uh, in Chapter 7, he increased, what, 195000 195000 And, and Fitchburg is getting two hundred. Fitchburg is getting 280000 Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, um, 195000 we, and we went over net school spending by $700,000 just right away. And then we added another one point three, and we're working on trying to help them solve the deficit from last year so they don't have to kick it into next year. So there's a bunch of moving parts, and I know it's really difficult to understand, but couple key things for people to remember because you can apply this to your own household. You, you, and, and we don't do this in the, on the city side. You, you can't use one-time money for fixed cost. Okay, let's, 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 let's get into that because let's, let's in get into that because we've seen, we've seen a lot of debate about this yes. on social media, at school committee meetings, even at city council right. meetings, where they talk about free cash and stabilization yes. funds. And one of the things that I notice is that it seems that a lot of people, no fault of their own, mm -hmm confuse free cash with stabilization confusing. funds and thinks it's the How same thing. How can anybody understand right. this? It's not meant to be so understood, can, So can you in under two minutes explain the difference between free cash and stabilization stabilization funds? is there in case of a major emergency. You have dam breaks. There's you know, real bad devastation in the community and you know, dam breaks and washes out homes and that sort of thing. Um, that's what a stabilization is account. If you, the government was to shut down, you would still need, just like your home, if something was to happen, you would get hurt or you know, something unforeseen happened. You need to have, you know, they say, well, you need to have three months' worth of money set aside, mm -hmm. right? Stabilization is set aside, not for things like, oh, we're running a little shot here or these kinds of things. Stabilization is to keep the city right. intact in case something big happens. Right. Free cash are things like we had a grant, we got reimbursed, the money came in late. You paid your water bill, that you, you paid it late, those things came in late. A department didn't spend all their money, you know, they were very frugal, right. didn't spend their money. Those are things that are unpredictable from year to right. year. So if we underestimate receipts one year and we take in more revenue than we projected. Excise tax, for that instance. Excise, that goes into free cash, needs to be certified by the state. Yes. Um, and, and it doesn't necessarily roll over. It needs to be recertified every year. It has to be recertified. Now, I think one of the arguments that's being made from the proponents of increasing the school budget beyond what they are now is that we're allocating too much of the free cash into the stabilization fund and that... No, no, here's what happens, though. Here's what yeah. we've been doing. Rather than wait for the, stabiliz for the free cash to be certified, we borrow from the stabilization and then pay ourselves back. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, and I had a little chart here, what happens is it looks like the stabilization account is getting transferred into, into for good. No, it's mm -hmm. temporary. In other words, we might have to borrow from that, and then we pay right. that stabilization. It's a good way to borrow money. You're not paying any interest on it and, it, and it takes care of the need right away. So the school department, for instance, got uh, you know 1.7 million maybe this year that we used from free cash. So we're not that's not staying in there. The free right, that's cash. free cash. In the right. past, we did put some free cash into there, but mm -hmm. most of that free cash is going back to where mostly it came from. So uh, fire department building for ambulance, those bills come in late, it goes back so we can pay overtime, so they can run the ambulance. Water and sewer, we, all, we don't have an enterprise account, mm -hmm. you know that, we close it out, but mm -hmm. that money came from where? Water right. and sewer. So at, the end of, so at the end of the fiscal year, the receipts are not always matching up with the expenditures because bills are still, still coming in or hasn't been paid. So when we see that Correct. free cash left over at the end of the year, that may not necessarily be accurate. There could be outstanding liabilities One of the that still Tom need to be paid. He's a teacher at the schools. He gets up yeah. at the meetings and he says, and it, we've explained this to him, totally. We've given him mm -hmm. all this information. And he says, we're finishing with five and six and three million dollars. And then he ends his, his statement. And everybody says, oh, my God, there's a bunch of money there. Why don't you use it? The mayor's got a pile of money. He doesn't want to use it. He hates schools and kids and everybody else. Then he doesn't go on to say, well, here's how we spent our free cash. And that, now, so that's not fair to just stop right there, just end mm -hmm. the sentence and say, well, you know, we're, we're, we're done here. So how are, we, how are we spending the free cash, let's, Mayor? Let's talk about how we're doing it. So a capital outlay account, in other words, the water and still goes back. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, city council expenses, fire department overtime, municipal building and capital expenses. We had to do a wall fell in that, uh, you know, the wall, hold, a retaining wall at city hall, holding back the parking lot fell in, snow and ice. 
Uh, we had to do a prisoner cell retrofit to comply with the state law. Mm -hmm. That comes out of free cash. Uh, uh, school department expenses, uh, so we, we, we transferred 243, 250. All along here, you see transfers going back. So we, we spent it back on in the, mostly and the one, and the one, improvements. The one, the extra one, one point, time yeah, and the, the extra one point three million dollars being appropriated to the school department, which is coming up for a vote of the city council next week. That's coming from free cash, also. Correct, correct. indirectly because it'll come from maybe stabilization, but it, but it's money that we finished that we put in there to help. Yeah, Lemonster has fourteen million dollars in its stabilization account. Right. Uh, how much is enough? Um, well, they're always up in the, the, the amount because they're because remember, what used to cost a thousand dollars now costs three, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, because of inflation. So if you look when when you were around, remember how bad the economy was when you were city council. Awful. Fort Devens, and that poor Jack man, he ends up as mayor. Fort Devens closes, the mall says we're leaving, and we have this horrible economy all mm -hmm. going on. It's like this perfect storm. What happens? The, we end up with a negative free cash. The bond rating drops from A to, uh, to the A little A, mm -hmm. right? So we work with our bond council and advisors to help us get to the point because, we, you know, the, 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 the better fiscal condition you're in, the more money you save in the long run, right, when you go to borrow money. Now, remember, mm -hmm. you have Johnny Appleseed School, Northwest School, going through big renovations, seven, mm -hmm. six, seven million dollars total, going to be building a new police station. We're going to have to go borrow money, permanently borrow. What are they going to look at? Our bond rating. What's the bond people going to look at? The, you know, the people are going to finance this. What's the city doing with their money? So for, the, so for the layperson out there, we a need, bond rating is equivalent to an individual's credit, credit rating. rating. Right. Individual you go buy credit a car, rating. what do they say? Well, right. it's 5% if you have good credit, but if you don't, right. it gets worse. It's 7 yeah. and 8. And so nine. the stabilization is basically serves us for twofold. Number one, if we need to go out and float a bond, we're going to be paying lower interest rates if we have a higher bond rating. Correct. Two, if we have a high stabilization account, it could uh, allow the city to be in a position where we don't have to float the bond at all. Correct. Um, if, if, it's, if it's... If something happened. Right. And then all of a sudden, the economy got really bad and then we had these payments to make. Right. Now, you have a place where you can get that money. Right. I mean, you know, at one time, most cities in the, in the state didn't have a stabilization account. We got right. a stabilization account little by little. Fitchburg has one now. Right. They didn't have one. Everyone's realizing how important these stabilization right. accounts are. So with, that, so with that being said, so now we understand the difference between free cash, stabilization right. account, the importance of a stabilization account, and what a bond rating is. And, and people one, will say, yeah. hey, the heck with the bond rating. we got a bigger problem right now. I'm like, yeah, well, you say that now. But then down the road, when it comes time to go to borrow, and all of a sudden the taxpayers are paying more money, mm -hmm. more money for a project, and you now I have less money to give to you as the school department. There's right. going to be some unhappy now the, people there. Now, the school department had a stabilization account they of about had, $5 million. They had these revolving accounts and accounts. They had, five years ago, they had as much as $5 million. And that's gone. They and use, they use those for fixed used, costs? They, a lot of it. And that's okay. what we'll find out from the audit. What, what right. I see is they, and, 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 again, and again, it's not to blame anybody, but that's right. why I'm there on the school committee. Caution, caution, red flag. Well, Shouldn't be so, using one-time so, money so, for fixed Okay, so here's, so, so. So let's put this in perspective. So over the past few years, they spent this $5 million that they had in reserves and revolving accounts and other places. Now that money's run out, so this creates the perfect storm because now we're going back and say, okay, let's go into the city stabilization fund. So the you question- You understand what you're saying now? Right. Let's start from the top. The same people that say the city needs a DOR review. Yeah. Say use free okay. cash and stabilization. Right. Page one of the manual for good fiscal management from the Department of Just Revenue. Don't use stabilization. Don't use but, it. But the now, but the let's take it a step yeah. further. Now, now the same people want to go in. We made the mistake of using one-time money for mm -hmm. fixed costs in the school department. What do they want to do? Come to the city, take the city's resources, financial resources, right. and do the same thing. Okay, so that so that leads to the question. That compounds right. the it, it does compound How many times it. can you make the same but mistake? Let's, but let's get to the root cause of that. Yes. So if they had to dip into all those or did they have to dip into those revolving funds and their own stabilization and that $5 million and spend those two, $5 million to keep the basic services? Mm -hmm. The question is, does that mean that they have been underfunded for several years, or does it mean that they have been overspending for several years? Well, what is, what, I mean, you're, you just sit in the school committee. I, I What's don't your think view? we have a funding problem, okay? Because remember, when they talk about um, getting to net school spending, everyone talks about how much more you spend over. But they mm -hmm. never tell you how much it costs to get to net school spending. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, um, you know, three of us are together here, and I lost 20 pounds, and you lost 20 pounds. And, well, if I weigh 110 pounds and I lost, you know, 20 or 30 pounds, that's pretty significant. 
But mm -hmm. nobody ever tells you what it takes to get to net school spending before right. you can spend it. So you think it's a spending issue and not a funding issue? Well, if you have a budget and you overspend your budget, then obviously that, right. that, that's but is a the problem. Budget, but is the budget funded at adequate levels where they had to dip into that $5 million and spend that over the well, past years? Let me ask you years? this question. Why isn't Fitchburg, if Fitchburg is, is just barely meeting that school spending or a little bit over in their net yep. school spending, and we are over spending more than them, why aren't they laying teachers off? Right. Why isn't there? Well, that was one of my that was one of up. my first questions. We, right. Well, why isn't Gardner? Why? And, and the other thing that Mr. Kanakia does, who's a teacher at the schools, is he comes in. He says we only spend one percent or some minor percent, right? Over, but he averages out over years. But he never tells you all the other things like transportation, building improvement okay. projects, the high school. He never tells you that in 08 we spent 1.5 over net school spending. That in 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 2013. Now these are bad economic years here, it's still bad mm -hmm. economy, it's still bad in 2013. We're talking $2.8 million over net school spending. Yeah. And then, yeah, there are some years that were a little lower, but there were other things happening, like the high school. Yeah. So we've got to take some of and our There was resources. one year we were below, but I believe they had the money but didn't spend it, they correct? They didn't spend the money. They didn't spend so it. So again, we right. didn't say, hey, you lost out. We reappropriated right. that money and gave it back to them. Another question that we have, and, and uh, a, a criticism, mm -hmm. um, and and hopefully you could address it, yes. shed some light on the issue, is that there is, uh, that there are um, accusations by some on the city council, mm -hmm. school committee, some residents, that the city um, grossly underestimates projected receipts. Mm -hmm. So that those, those re, uh, receipts, estimated receipts are sent to DOR, DOR gives us our tax rate, and that is artificially inflating our tax rate because mm -hmm. we're underestimating receipts. So we pulled this up to take a look at it, mm -hmm. and um, the, the numbers do seem to be off, and hopefully you can shed some light on yeah. it. For example, this is our, uh, 2015. Motor vehicle excise taxes, the city estimated 2.7 million. Mm -hmm. We actually brought in 4.7 million. Mm -hmm. um, penalties and interest on taxes and excise, estimated 183,000, brought in 293,000. Fees, estimated 168,000, brought in 287,000. Licenses and permits, we, the, the city estimated it would take in 490,000, mm -hmm. it brought in 914,000. Fines and forfeitures, the city estimated 110,000, actually brought in 205,000. Investment income, the city projected $50,000, 126,000. Medicaid reimbursement, the city estimated 250,000, um, actually received 836,000. And, and, and that money just goes right back into the school for the transportation. But right. let me just, as yep. an example, the governor said the other day, we were talking about the, you know, about the economy and how you know, taxes aren't coming in. Automobile sales are off anywhere between six and 10%. Well, automobile doesn't cost five or ten thousand dollars anymore. We're talking twenty, thirty, forty. I looked at a truck the other day, and I jumped back in my truck faster than I, I jumped <laughs> out. Right, sixty, seventy thousand. When those vehicles are off, okay, you're not taking in the excise tax that you thought. But how can we predict? And again, you look at things as a long-term trend, right? Mm -hmm. And if you start playing that game where you're going to try to predict right to the penny, one bad year. What, right. This is what happened to the school department. They tried to predict. Right? And then all of a sudden they didn't get the state aid they thought they were going to get. They're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So there's no money left. So if we run into a year where we don't take in you know, fines and penalties because you know, we didn't have them, or building permits. We went mm -hmm. years with, I mean, people were pulling building permits for stoves and pellet stoves, right. and the people weren't even, insulation. Now they're finally building houses, but that can change real quick. It changes because there aren't many houses, you know, house lots left in Lemons that are built on. So mm -hmm. those accounts vary, and, and I think the comptroller takes a very conservative end because the last time, if you look back to 1994, 1995, 1996, they were overestimated, and we got ourselves in trouble, and we didn't have any free cash, and we had to dig ourselves out. So is the underestimation of anticipated receipts a intentional? Prediction. Intentional. Not at all. It's a prediction based on long-term trends. And again, okay. excise tax, caution, red, red flag, right. because that can change. That's the one yep. area that changes real fast. All of a sudden, people aren't buying cars. Gas goes up. Look at gas went up to four dollars again. I never could have predicted, but it's back down to two now, and I can right. never have predicted that either. You can't get in that game of counting, of budgeting so thin 
And that's what happened in the school department. They budgeted so thin that the one crisis that comes in, which is, you know, the state doesn't give them as much help as, as they thought, and they don't end up with as many kids, and now they're off by $2 million. They're in trouble. Okay. So you've got to budget, and, and even in people's homes and in my own life, I, I budget very conservatively because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball. So in fairness to the comptroller, when he makes these recommendations, it's really, and a finance team that we have at City Hall, it's mm -hmm. based on long-term trend. And I think you're going to see with the amount of used automobiles there are coming back as leases, you're going to see the excise tax revenues fall, fines and fees fall, all of those things I think are, are, are predictably, or at least we anticipate the fall. You'll need that buffer in there. Otherwise, you'll be going back mm -hmm. to the taxpayer saying you've got to pay more next year. Why? Kind of like water rates, mm -hmm. right? People are losing less water. What happened? They had to go up in the water rates. Why? We're taking in less money. we still got to run the system. Yeah. So taking a conservative approach as a matter of policy in terms of estimating receipts is, is well, what you consider to be fiscally because responsible. Because I've seen, because of my position yeah. is that in a state is on joint labor management where we do you know, contracts and finances for different cities, I've looked and saw it too many times when I look at their sheet and I'm like, this is why you're in trouble. You didn't, mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't anticipate anything to change. You thought it was going to get better. It doesn't always work that way. So we, we budget very conservatively, and it keeps us out of trouble. Right. So uh, th those that advocate taking from the stabilization fund, mm -hmm. which the DOR says is bad fiscal practice. And so does Moody's. And our, and, and yeah. our private uh, lo uh, bond council yeah. says, red flag, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Keep doing right. that stuff, and you're going to end up it, it, with a, a lower bond rate. Right. So if, we t if, if, they take from sta if you take from stabilization mm -hmm. for fixed costs, without addressing the underlying there issues. You there you go. There it is, right there. In the budget, you there just, yeah, aren't you just kicking this, the can down the road? This whole half hour sums up in what well, you just said. I can't say it any better. It just kicks the can down the road. It, 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 it's what they did. Now they want to kick it over here. In other words, they did that. They used yeah. one-time money for fixed costs. Now there's no more. So mm -hmm. what do they want to do? They want to come to the city and start working off of their reserves Doing the same thing without fixing the problem, okay. kicking the can down the road. What's the timeline on completing this audit for the school department? Um, well, we, we've got to get some prices. We were on the phone today, actually, when I left my office, getting some prices on, you know, estimated. They did one, uh, they did one in Amesbury, a little smaller community, two years ago, but really uh, extensive, came up with some good recommendations. As quick as we can. we got to get, I mean, we do it anyway. We do a year in. The city doesn't have to do an annual mm -hmm. audit. We do one on the schools and the city every year. Okay. This time it'll be more extensive because we really have to answer to the public as to what happened here. And the big thing is my overall goal at the end of all this, it'll take some time, is to have the investment companies, to have people look at our budget and say, you know what, this is good. these are good fiscal policies. This is the same thing they tell the city. We're mm -hmm. told we have good, strong financial management, good management. We want the same thing for the school department. We have a minute and a half left. I'm going to let you answer a question from Steve Powell from our group. Yes. Why are we so far down on the list on how, uh, how much cities pay above net school spending? Why can't we be near the top? Education is that you important. Can. And, and you can. And, and, for, and for the record, when, when we looked it up, uh, it was, Leminster was 290 for, 291 out of 312 school districts. And, and that's impossible. That's impossible because there are 30 to 40 who haven't even, who haven't even met net school spending. Right. So right out of the gate, that wrong, that's wrong. That's, that's going, well, look at, look at the communities that are spending it over net school, way over net school spending, mm -hmm. right? Most of them have gone. Somebody told me the other day, yeah, I live in Avon. I used to live in Leminster. We spent a bunch of money. I looked up Avon, overrides, debt exclusions, all of that. Yeah, this is a simple equation, right? You want to spend more than it has to come from somewhere. Where does it come from? At the end of the day, either you cut another department, which we had to do over years. We've cut each. You look at just look at one comparison here. Since nineteen, since uh, two thousand eight till present, the school department has hired eighty six new people. The city side, we've hired three and a half people. There it is. So we took from city to give to the school department. Mm -hmm. We've run out. On the city side, we've run out. There are no places to take the money from. So now you're down to, you have to increase revenues. Mayor, exit question. Do you have confidence in the superintendent to perform, execute the mission of the school department? I am one member of nine, and I'm not taking the quick way out. If you look at my last review, you will see. You will see. In fact, ask it. Maybe you can read it on, on your show sometime. My review of the superintendent when it gets to finances. I, this thing, I just laid it right out. Here's the problem. And, but um, uh, in the end, I'm one of nine. I'm, I'm putting my uh, evaluation of the superintendent together now. In, uh, in a week, everyone will know exactly what it is. 
Excellent. Right now, the bigger problem is getting through this. Excellent. Mary Mazzarella, thank you very yeah, much. Good to see you, Kevin. Thank you very much. We'll catch you. Fitchburg, Lemonster, All Politics. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.